Well, you guys have been wondering about how to install those inexpensive Chinese diesel heaters. Stand by. So I lost a little bit of footage. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, not too long ago I had some issues. Uh, I, the computer was overloaded and I deleted a bunch of things and ended up deleting a few videos of <laughs> when I installed the diesel heater. So I'm gonna try to piece everything in there together and make sure you got all the information you need. But uh, this is how you do it. Okay, yeah, so again, we're gonna mount it somewhere in here. We don't have enough room uh, back in there, unfortunately. Um, to do it and I don't that with our wiring there's not enough room to really kind of squeeze it in there so it's gonna have to be somewhere in this area here so I want to take a look underneath and see exactly what's going on so because that'll help determine it you know you can pick a perfect spot all you want up above but if it doesn't if it lines up with a wheel well or if it lines up with a, a main support strut or something you know it doesn't really help you much so let's take a look at what we got outside so yeah it turns out right at the back corner here there was an old heater unit and so there was already a a small hole in this point right here and so it made sense plus you know as you can see like I mentioned you don't want to be you know make sure you don't set yourself up and start drilling a hole right where you've got like a major support beam like this you know you start to, you know you just think oh I'm gonna put it there and start drilling from up above and run run into one of these or, or one like that on the other side so always go underneath take a good look around make sure you've got a good clear spot and then it kind of makes sense also for us to do this in the back corner and that way it gives her more, more room. This is right above here is where her bed is. And so there's storage underneath the bed. So that's got room around it to function properly in the corner back there, but it uh, is out of the way from other storage and works out nicely for, uh, for all that, so. Okay, so to make the uh, connections with the actual supply hose line, that little, little guy right there, and this is the actual uh you know supply line so what they do is they give you this piece of black tubing that's outside diameter or inside diameter is the outside diameter of the pipe here and so it basically you cut chunks off of these to give yourself little transitions between here and the pump and the filter and all those good all right well not sure how much this is picking up but i'm just gonna set it that way and do it so again take a little chunk of the about an inch or inch and a half of that pipe, of that tubing. Cut a piece off. And then you take it and put it into the end of the pipe of the... Uh, you want to go all the way through. I'm going to push it all the way through just so I can see how far I am. We're almost. Okay, so... That's what these little clamps are for. That's what, uh... There are these little little pinch clamps. One on there. And then we'll put another one out on the end. So that one's the one that actually holds it to the Pipe. I'm using my bullnose nippers here instead of just a regular wrench, but that seems to work just fine. Uh, we're going to see about hooking up the gas line to the gas tank later in the winter when I've got my buddy Jack to help me out down in Arizona, right Jack? The, the diesel heater king. Uh, <laughs> uh, so in the meantime, I'm going to set it up so that it's essentially in place, but uh, we're going to be able to just use a gas can uh, with the uh, diesel fuel in it. And, uh... So the pump has um, a little arrow on it there, it should anyway, for the direction that you want your fuel to be going, which is, for me in this case, that way towards the unit and they come it comes with this handy little uh, rubber holder so that kind of slides right onto the body like that and so it get it in the middle there and so I'm gonna mount that right here on the bottom of the the uh, chassis here yeah yeah the side with the connector is the direction of the 
well in this case. So I'll remember that myself. All right, so it's gonna mount right here. So I cut my hose long enough for it to uh, connect up here. Okay, so got our supply tube connected up here, the exhaust connected here, and I had to use an additional little L bracket there that I found that I had with me, and then uh, along with this is the one that came with it, and uh, I couldn't quite figure out how to line it up. This is a little too far away, so used the extra one to kind of give it a, a second connector, but then that's now nice and secured over here. Got the intake over here again kind of running over connected up to the bottom right here it's got the little protection so bugs and stuff can't get in and now the actual pump right here again you use a couple of the those little the little clamps on there and a little bit of that black tubing and uh, there's our supply going right up up to the bottom of the unit up there and then uh, another short section of it and then uh, the fuel filter and again it has uh, like, uh, arrows on it to show to make it flow. Right, so this is how it fits in the bottom corner back here real nice and you want to leave yourself some room around it and it also the back here needs to have some airflow coming into it this part so it's good to be able to you know have some air coming in from other locations around it you don't want it in a real tight closed box or anything like that so just something to keep in mind but uh, this is how it mounted inside and uh, as you can see you just a couple of screws down it comes with this extra uh, this little mounting plate and there's actually a uh, like a silicone gasket that comes with it as well so that seals it up nice from uh, you know from any fumes from wanting to come up through and I ended up drilling another additional hole back in the corner back here for the electrical connection that uh, runs up to the uh, to the box and gives it the power it needs so that runs right from your dc power um it's current on there all full time if you want so that uh just flick of a switch you're good to go and then uh the supply runs under here and uh flip it around here got a little elbow on it here so that it would uh, reach the front of our space and then just did it mounted here so it blows right out these guys can turn so you can aim the air more up or down or down to the floor more if you want towards your feet but uh works out real nice that way so that's how she's mounted inside so we mounted the controller right here on the side of the cabinet along with uh, some of the other controls this is the uh controller here and directly wired right down underneath and uh again powered that way it can actually be removed from there so you can see it a little better but as you can see there's always power running to it and there's lots of videos showing people turning them on running them and everything uh, basically it's the middle right button there the power button and then there's all the settings you just got to run through all the directions on the uh, on the unit to set it all up and get it all dialed in the way you want it but uh, it's a nice warm day today so we're not going to crank it on but uh, I'll show you some of the other footage here as we were originally getting set up there and you can see how it works and how well it, uh, how little fuel it actually uses. All right, so for the time being, I'm trying to run it right out of a can here, filled her up with diesel and uh, I just siphoned a bunch through to the uh, filter right here. So it's getting there and you can kind of see now bubbles. There it goes. Yeah, see that's, once the line gets solid and it's pushing like that, it'll push enough through to uh, 
start actually burning it and then I shall go. And now, as you can hear, the pump is getting louder, more consistent. And if we can get enough pushing through the line here, we'll start getting a burn. But uh, this is how you do it if you want to stay warm all winter and you got a small van or a bus or a small trailer, any kind of smaller rig, uh, these little diesel heaters are phenomenal. They sip a tiny bit of diesel fuel and they keep up space anywhere 50 square feet to a couple hundred square feet, nice and toasty.